The picture on the board right now represents what we call a cyclotron, which is usually used to accelerate charged particles to really, really high speeds and then smash them into something. And the reason we might smash them into something is to maybe find out what it's made of or find out what's inside or something like that. Here's how it works. This cyclotron consists of two Ds, a forward D and a backward D. These two Ds both have magnetic fields inside, but in between these Ds, there's going to be an electric field. Notice there's a little bit of a gap right here. There's an electric field in that gap, and that electric field is going to be what causes the charged particles to speed up. But that electric field gap is a pretty small gap. So what we got to do is not just accelerate it across the gap once, we got to accelerate it across the gap multiple times. And the way that we do that is to cause the particles to loop around so that they can go through that gap again. Let's inject an ion or a proton or some kind of charged particle in the middle of the gap, in the middle of this cyclotron. What happens to it? Well, it accelerates, it speeds up. It speeds up till it goes to this point right here. And then it no longer speeds up because now it's out of the electric field. Now it's in a magnetic field, and as a result of that, it goes in a circle. What happens when it goes back to the electric field? Well, it's going to speed up again, right, can we? It's going to speed up again. Now, as it speeds up again, it's going to go into the magnetic field on the other side of this cyclotron. The backwards D goes in a circle, speeds up, goes into the magnetic field in the forwards D goes in a circle, speeds up, and so on and so on and so on. Now, I've said a few times that this charged particle, whatever it is, goes in a circle when it's in that D. I don't know about you, that doesn't look like a circle to me. That looks more like a, like a spiral. Can anybody explain to me why it appears to be spiraling outwards as opposed to going in a circle? Even when I said, whilst in the magnetic field goes in a circle? This charged particle right now is going in a perfect circle. What happens when it goes across the Ds? The gaps? The gap, I should say. Yep. Yeah. Good. It speeds up, so it goes in a bigger circle. That's a circle, too. It's just a bigger circle because it's going faster. It speeds up, goes in a bigger circle. Still a circle, but going faster, and so on and so on. So the effect of that is it ends up spiraling outwards. Yep. Eventually, this thing spirals out like this, more or less like that at least, and then we remove the magnetic field or turn the magnetic field off, and what happens? Well, now it just goes in a straight line because now there's no magnetic force. So it hits a target. Maybe it hits another particle. Maybe it hits some kind of target, whatever, and gets photographed. We take a look at what's inside it or whatever it is that we wanted to observe. Here's the question, though. If we have, let's say, a positive ion here, injected in the middle of this electric field in between these two Ds, the forward D and the backward D. What direction does the magnetic field have to be pointing in order to cause the deflection the way that it is? I'm going to give you uh, 30 seconds or so to see if you can come up with an idea for that. Which direction does the magnetic field have to be pointing to cause this particle to go in a circle the way that it does. We're not looking for the magnitude because we don't know any numbers, but we can determine what the direction of the field has to be, assuming it's a positive particle here. Okay, 30 seconds starting now. We don't know which way the magnetic field points right now, but we do know which way the magnetic force points. Which way does the magnetic force point? Oh, everybody knows this. Just think about it. Which way does the magnetic force point? Yeah? But to the left, sometimes. Points. No, not outwards. Oh. Towards the center, yes. It's a centripetal force, right? It's going in circles. So the, ma the magnetic force is pointing toward the center of the circle. Let's look at a certain point here. It doesn't matter where we pick. Let's pick this point. The velocity of the particle at the bottom is pointing to the right. The magnetic force on the particle is into the page. If it's a positive particle going to the right with a force, not into the page, but into the center of the circle, then the magnetic field will point into the page. 
thumb in the direction of the particle, palm in the direction of the force, which is toward the center, fingers point into the page. Make sense? Now, what if you had to pick... What if you had to pick somewhere else? What if you had to pick this spot? Well, the charged particle is now moving up. The magnetic force would still be into the center of the center of the circle there. We would say right hand, thumb in the direction of the particle, palm in the direction of the force, which is toward the center of the circle. Fingers still point into the page. Is that all right? That's a tricky one, eh? Don't get... Don't get messed up there. Don't look at this and say, oh, this is a coil rule question. No, it's not. Just because it looks like we kind of have a coil there. We don't have a coil at all. We have charged particles kind of spiraling out, but that's not a coil of wire. That's not a solenoid. So don't use the coil rule. Wire grasp rule? No, don't use the wire grasp rule either. We've got a force, a force that acts toward the center of the circle. Whenever you've got a magnetic force, that's when you're going to want to use the deflection rule. So that's what we use here. All right, I'm going to give you just a few minutes here to work on some questions on page 601, just to kind of get back into the swing of physics for the week. Uh, the questions that I want you to work on are page 601, number 3 to 10, except for question 6B. I'm going to scroll down for a second. Somebody tell me why I'm not assigning question 6B. Yeah, good, perfect answer. It's not uh, parallel or perpendicular. If it was parallel, the force would be zero. If it's perpendicular, then we can use what we learned, right? QVB, MV squared over R, the hand rule for deflection. So don't do 6B, you don't know how to do it. It's not very hard, by the way, actually. It's actually quite easy, but we don't have to do it, so we, we won't bother with it. Um, we'll leave you with, uh, as I said, uh, questions 3 to 10, except for 6B, and we'll give you a few minutes to work on those in class here right now. <laughs> 